And renew the right spirit within me Creating me a clean heart, O oh God And renew the right spirit within me Can renew the right spirit within me Creating me a clean heart, oh God Good morning again They tell me the people in Kansas are celebrating today because sometimes last fall they planted their wheat and this is the time of year when they start to harvest it and they're going by uh, something from the, the Bible that, that said to, to celebrate on the first fruits or the first harvest that comes about and nowadays we don't call it that anymore the feast of the harvest we call it Pentecost and Pentecost is a pretty special day uh, because it's the day that the church was born it's the day when the Holy Spirit was passed out and, 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 and 3,000 were, uh, were brought to Christ. And, and so uh, the, the church started. And what's known as the church age. How long will the church age last? People have different understandings of that. We spoke about that this morning. It's going to last from the day of Pentecost, basically until either the tribulation or the rapture if you believe that it comes before the tribulation the church will be taken out and then God will do all the stuff during the tribulation that, that goes on and so if you're in the church age you are wonderfully 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 blessed uh, we're going to start the book of, of Exodus tonight we just finished Genesis and that was a good short study wasn't it how long did it last about two and a half years that we got through it I actually have the binders in, in there they're two binders that thick and, and we went through all the pages but we did it as I used to teach kids about math how do you solve a long problem it's just like eating an elephant how do you do it one bite at a time and that's how we did it so we wound up with two binders of notes that, that we came through that and I, I hope you got the blessing out of it I did I certainly enjoyed worshiping with y'all on, on all those evenings that, that, that we got to do that and that, that was a a, a joyous time that, that, that when I think of it. Uh, it it's, it's also wonderfully grown to the point now that we have kids classes and we, uh, the, we have two different divisions for them and we have the meal at, at uh, 6 o'clock to 6.30 and we moved it earlier so kids could get home and get to bed a, a little better and get ready for school the next day even though school's about 10. But uh, we're, we're excited about the Exodus study that we begin tonight. It says, when the day of Pentecost, Pentecost means 50, and it's 50 days after the resurrection, had fully come, they were all in, in one accord in, in one place. Someone pointed out that in, uh, in Israel, in Kansas, as they celebrate today, uh, then they'd start their wheat harvest. For uh, all winter, the ground looked dead, covered with, with snow. 
Nothing there. And, and what happened there? Uh, uh, a, a dead seed was planted. Dry, wasn't it? And the Bible tells us a little bit about that. In fact, let me read the verse. Jesus said it this way, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. So what happened these days later? I think it's a 180 to 250 days before it reaches fruition, depending on where it's at. But what happens? How much, how much rice does one grain of rice produce? We've got some rice people in here. About what, what does one grain produce when it, when it was planted? Any idea? Depends on if it's hybrid or not or, or whatever. Sometimes you see those stalks falling over, don't you? Right? And all that. Because one died. Well, how many of us will live forever because one died for us and was buried? And so we have a picture of that resurrection, don't we? So it, that, that takes place. So Acts tells us a little bit more about that and then we'll move on from there. He says, when the day had come, they were all in accord in one place. Suddenly there came the sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. This is where the apostles are sitting. Then there appeared to be to them divided tongues of fire, and, and one set on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in a, with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there they were dwelling... Uh, in, in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are these not all those who speak Galilean? How is it that we hear each one in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and, and Elamites and those dwelling in Mesopotamia and Judea and C Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and all the other uh, and the other parts of Libya, joining Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and apostolites, Christians and Arabs. We heard them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God, and they were amazed and perplexed and said to one another. What could this mean? What did it mean? The church age was born. Uh, that was acts as the genesis of the, the new birth of the church. And, and so that's how God made it happen the first time. And, and he does it different. And you go through there, there's different orders that it happens. But then you see it normalized throughout the, the rest of the apostles. Now Ephesians tells us that when do you receive the Holy Spirit? The Bible says when you believe. The Holy Spirit comes and seals you as a down payment, as a surety that what? You're going to be in heaven, that you're saved. What does the Bible say it takes to be saved? Romans 10, 9 says what? Confess with your mouth, He's your Lord. Believe Jesus is your Lord. That's your leader. Right? That's the one that goes on and we follow. Right? And, and believe in your heart, that means it has to be sincere that God raised Him from the dead and you shall be saved. So first fruits of wheat is pretty nice. And how long will... We keep you alive. How long will bread keep you alive? A while. It'll make you fat pretty quick. I've learned that. It, it, it's interesting. Uh, if you go on one of those diets and all, bread's what your enemy. It, you can be on the keto diet and you can ever, eat everything else on a hamburger and it's all keto. But you throw the bread in there and it's, it's way out of bounds. Uh, and, and it's interesting that God puts so many calories Right? So much nutrient in, into that bread. And, and uh, so that you can make these crops and keep people alive for a long time. Just as they use rice around the world similarly. Right? How long will the bread of life, Jesus, keep you alive? Forever. Forever. So you get all these pictures going back and forth. Alright? Uh, I want to talk about something else today. And it's this. Uh, Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each may receive things done in the body according to what He's done, whether good or bad. The judgment seat of Christ. We're going to talk about that today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You for loving us. Thank You for this, this marvelous church age. We're not following all the laws of Levit Leviticus and Exodus and, and all the others. There's so many. And then the 
Lord, we know that the Pharisees and Sadducees added even more to it. And nobody can keep all of them, much less one. Or one le much less all of them. And, and that's, your, that's your standard, is perfection. And since we don't live up to that and can't live up to that, you came down and made another way. Jesus, you, you, you died in our place. And then you gave us your, your perfect, clean sin record to our spirit stuff so we could be in heaven with you. And Lord, while we're still on this earth, it, as the song said, created us a clean heart. This body still wants to do wrong things and does. And we follow way too often. We follow our human hearts instead of, of, of the one that, that, that you would have us to have. So we, we pray, Lord, create in us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in us, Lord, your right spirit, so that others will see Jesus through us. Father, that's what we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the judgment seat of Christ, what is that? Uh, just on this, just a quick vote. Raise your hand if you know exactly what that is compared to the other judgment seat. If you know that, raise your hand. Just have an idea. Okay. Not, a, not a whole lot. And that's typical in, in, in churches because we get saved and we kind of what? We're good. <laughs> or, or we belong to a denomination. Well, we're good. We're, we're one of these or one of those. Is that what the Bible teaches? And, and so why is it that we don't know these other things about the judgment seat of the Christ? And, and, and what's the other one? The great white throne judgment found in Revelations. Okay? And we can, we can look at it a little later. But what I really want to concentrate is this. And we've taught this before. But it's confusing and sometimes we, we go back and look at it. For example, if I'm saved, what am I being judged for? If, if I'm saved, if I've done what the Bible says, if I put my faith in Jesus, if I trust His Word, and He says, what well, you, if you follow Jesus as your Lord, if you confess it with your mouth and you believe in your heart, you shall, you will be saved. It's a definite term. So what am I being judged for? The, the judgment seat of Christ, He's judging us for our works. Did my works save me? What are we saved by? Grace. How do we grip the grace that God offers us? Grace is undeserved. It's right up front, it means undeserved favor. Right? How do, we, how do we get that gift? By grace we're saved through what? Faith. We grip it with our faith. Right? And not of works, lest any man should boast. We can't brag that, oh, we're so good. <laughs> right? We can't brag that at all. And most of us know us, and if we don't, our spouses know us, and we, they know that we're not that good, right? It, it, it's how it goes. Uh, and so, but he says, look at it. For we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Hebrews tells us that it's appointed unto man once to die and then face the judgment. There's going to be a judgment. But Christians, let me go ahead and tell you, you who have been born again into the church age since this Pentecost that happened 50 days after Jesus uh, 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 arose from the dead. Since you've been born then and you've made Jesus your Lord, He said that you're sealed. He gave you the Holy Spirit as a surety. How many of us feel the Holy Spirit every now and then telling you, shut your mouth, you're talking about something you shouldn't be. Have you ever had that little, you, you, you know, that, you know, uh, and, and, and now is He saying that because He hates you? Is He saying it because He's going to disown you? He's saying what? He's convicting you. This is the wrong thing. Don't be doing that. You're not building the kingdom. You're not doing all these other things. There's a better way to live. Right? Conviction is a miracle from heaven. Even if it don't feel like it when he said, be quiet now. Right? Why is it a miracle from heaven? Because the supernatural is talking to the natural. Right? And so if something supernatural happened in the natural, we call it a miracle. That's what it is. Uh, so sealed in the Spirit, and yet it says we're going to be judged. Your, your name's already in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's that registrar that, that God puts in there. You can read about it, and uh, we may look at it in, if we have time, uh, in, in Revelations chapter 20. But anyway, that, that judgment is for you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. That, that's what that judgment is. But Christians are going to be judged, but not for heaven or hell. What are they going to be judged for? He says, you're going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each of the one may receive the things done in the body. Are you judged once you've accepted Christ by the things done in the body? Not for heaven or hell. You're judged for what? Rewards. Or lack of rewards. Okay? That, that's what it's about. I heard one preacher put it this way. My job... As a preacher, for a church with 
predominantly saved people is to be sure that on that day, on that day, there will be rewards of plenty for you that are going to last through the millennial kingdom. And I don't know how much longer than that. Millennial means the first thousand years was when Jesus is governing on earth. Also in Revelation, relations it talks about. Okay? And, and uh, if, if you were, uh, how many of y'all, we asked this this morning, how many of y'all made less than five graduations this year? How many made less than three? How many made one? Only one. That's me. Only, we only made one. And what do they what do they tell the kids when they're all there? This person got what? This scholarship. This one got that scholarship. And you know they get down to Brother Darrell when he was there. This person attended. You know it gets kind of that way. You know. But you get these these awards for for what you've done while you were at school, right? And and so that's what happens. And that's the kind of the judgment that that takes place at this judgment seat of Christ. How is it judged? How is it judged? It's interesting because that when churches were starting, they'd say, well, you know, I was listening to Paul. So I really know my stuff. Somebody said, oh, no, he couldn't talk worth anything. I listened to Apollos. He had a silver thumb. He could really do it. Another said, no, not me. I, I Peter. Peter's the one. He's the one. It, it, so I'm better than you because I followed this one. And so Paul is telling, it's about Jesus, guys. It's, it's about Jesus. Bottom line, right? By faith alone, through Christ alone. And, and how do we know about Him? Through God's Word. Right? He gives us the standard of everything that we do. And, and so, Peter's, um, Paul is talking about that. He says, I planted, Paul watered, and God gave the increase. God added to the church daily. When he says the church, he's not talking about a particular congregation, although it can be applied that way. I trust that if you're here, it's not an accident, because God doesn't have accidents. Right? If you're here in, in a house that's dedicated to God and we're preaching God's Word and His Spirit is in charge, then it's not an accident. You can refuse to go where He sends you, right? And you can get the bit between your teeth as horses are known to do, the hard-headed ones, the hard-mouthed ones anyway, and they're going to go where they want because it feels better and all that. But if you follow where the Holy Spirit is, you're going to be exactly where God wants you to be. And I pray that you're here today. And He says, I planted a polished water. God gave increase. God's in charge of making those things happen. He knows which church needs your spiritual gifts that are given. He knows which church someone who's lost needs to come to to find out the, the good news of Christ. Right? He knows all of those. So then, neither who plants is anything, nor who waters, it's God that gives the increase. So can we pat ourselves on the back? Well, I'm such a good preacher. You know, we grew, I grew God's kingdom. Can I grow God's kingdom? No. Can I be a tool? To grow. Can you be a tool to grow God's kingdom? Absolutely. He calls. He commissions you. Right? If you join the police, you don't just, they don't just give you a gun when you walk through the door. You've got to be commissioned, trained and commissioned to use it. Right? You have to have a written paper and all that kind of stuff before that happens. Well, you've been commissioned to go out and not take lives, but what? Offer life. It doesn't come from you. It's, you remember the policeman says what? Stop in the name of the law. Right? I can offer people eternal life in the name of Jesus. That's the authority. That's what authorizes that. And you have that same thing. You've been commissioned in the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and make disciples. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, right? So, he says, now he who plants and waters are one. It don't matter if you were the planter or the waterer. You were just what? A tool God used to make it happen. And I say just, I don't know, that's, that's a pretty, pretty neat thing that you can, if you've ever been a farmer or planted a garden or anything, isn't it amazing that you put the seed in the ground, you put a little water on it, and amazingly that seed comes to life in front of you. And you say, boy, look what I did. You didn't do that. <laughs> you put it in the ground, you put water on it. Who did that? Who made this wonderful cycle, plant cycle work? God did. And how many pictures of resurrection do we have where there's wheat in the field, a dead field for a winter? Right? Or, or it's a tree that, that looks dead through the winter and comes back to life every spring. Who gives that picture of the resurrection? God does, over and over and over. He says, each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. It's not salvation. His reward is not salvation. Well, Brother Darrell, isn't it? No, it's not. How do I know that? Well, it says over here. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. It didn't say the reward of God, it said the what? Gift of God. 
a lot of uh, graduating seniors got gifts in the mail. How many of you, uh, Meemaws and Pawpaws, gave them gifts every year whether they graduated or not in some form or another? Christmas and birthday and on and on and on. Why? Because they earned it. No, they didn't. Why would you give it to them? Some of them went the opposite from earning it, didn't they? But you loved them anyway. God gives us a gift of eternal life through Christ Jesus. Now, there's only one way. Who, who is he? The truth, the way, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by Jesus. Right? So, when it says the gift is eternal life through Christ Jesus, because somebody says the wages of sin is death, somebody had to die. Or God's a liar. He says the wages of sin is death. A death has to occur. It has to be an acceptable gift, death. He gave temporary pictures of death through all the animals and whatever animals gave Adam and Eve their, their skins that they covered themselves with. But he finally gave the one death that was fully atoning, acceptable to God, and it was the death of the perfect who was fully man and fully God and never sinned. Right? And, and that death is paid so that you and I can go free. So that, that's what we're talking about. He said, each will receive his reward. So where does rewards come in? After you're a child of God. All who went to Jesus had the right to be known as children of God according to the book of John chapter 1. Right? All that put their trust in Him, that happened. After you become a child of God, you can, what? Receive rewards. Well, well, why? Isn't that greedy? I mean, I'm already going to heaven. Why, why do I need a reward? Or, I'm too good to get a reward. All that. Well, what does the Bible say? It says we must believe that He's a rewarder. In the book of Hebrews, it tells that we must believe He's a rewarder. Th then He must want us to want these rewards. Uh, he says to bear fruit. What kind of fruit does he say he wants? Did he say he want peaches or apples? What kind of? He said I bear fruit and fruit that will what? Last. How long does he want it to last? What's the fruit of a Christian? What's the fruit of an apple tree? Another apple. What's the fruit of a, a wheat seed? More wheat, right? What's the fruit of a Christian? More Christians. How long will they last? Forever. Right? That's what he wants from us Christians. And he says he will reward for that. Is he rewarding because he wants it to be a contest so he can get the most? No. He's rewarding because he wants to affirm you in what you're doing. He's also learned who he can trust. It bothers me when I think about can God trust me in a tough situation. You know what I mean? In a situation of temptation, in a uh, situation of discomfort, in a situation of all-out pain, in a situation of, of am I going to be here tomorrow? Right? Where my life's in jeopardy and all that. Can he trust me in, in that spot? And, and the truth is, I, I, I don't know. I want, to, I want to say, yeah. But that would be kind of bravado because I haven't been there. I watched my, mother, my brother go uh, on to the Lord early, and, and I was amazed at, at, at what, what a shining light he became. It wasn't the light he was before when he got to that place, but God allowed him to be in that place, and he, he became a shining light. You know? and, and, and I wondered if, if, if I could do that. Uh, am I trustworthy to the Lord with the wrong pressures put on me? Scary thoughts, right? And yet, who's going to make us trustworthy? Why did David pray, and, and, and we get to pray, creating me a clean heart? Will, will God in His Spirit give us the grace to handle those times? And when you go read many accounts of Christians placed in those times, it, it's amazing grace, this, this grace stuff, right? Grace, uh, living grace, dying grace, witnessing grace, all of those kind of things. And He affirms us with these rewards, and he, we get to see who He trusts. When you read about the minas and the talents you remember giving to the people, and, and the, the maker would go away and come back later, he found out who he could trust for those things, didn't he? Who is going to occupy and do what he said till he comes back? And those that do, he rewarded. And was happy. Well done, good and faithful servant. So that's the rewards that it's talking about. Well done, good and faithful servant. You grew, you got there. We've studied about uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in these two and a half years. Was Jacob a very trustworthy guy when we first met him? No. And yet at the end, his name was changed to what? Israel. Israel still is. There's a lot in the world that want to get rid of it, but they can't because God's got his hand on it. There is no other, in my understanding, there is no other nation that was dispersed 
2,000 years ago that maintain their identity. It's just not there. They might trace some answers, but, but this has always been wherever they are. They're Jews, they're this, they're that. And even got to go back to their homeland. And since no other one has happened, let's see, what do you call that when the supernatural makes something extraordinary happen? It's called a what? A miracle. And the world hates it. Right? The world hates that thought. It, it represents God's power. Okay? Anyway, everybody gets their reward, it says, who, who are working in God's field. It says, verse 9, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, and you are God's building. Uh, this building is made out of tin and concrete, little paint, little putty, right? This, this building is not the church. It's a building. And, and the easiest way I explain it is a doghouse a dog. No, and a church house isn't a church. What's the church? Everybody in it who has the Spirit of God sealing them in, in them. Remember, He'll never leave us or forsake us. And the way He does that is His Spirit placed in us. It's, it's replaced the old Holy of Holies. It's where God's Spirit chooses to, to dwell in His people, right? It says, you are the fellow workers. He's going to use you to reach those who don't know about Him. He says, according to the grace of God which was given to me, and this is Paul speaking, as a wise builder. Now, is he bragging on himself? He says, no, God gave me the grace to act as a wise builder. He says, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. Let each one take heed of how he builds on it. Now, what's the foundation that Paul laid? He went to these towns where they didn't speak his language in a lot of places, certainly didn't know his culture, and, and all those things. And this Jewish guy, a Hebrew of Hebrews, told them about Jesus, and the Holy Spirit moved on them, and they accepted. A lot of them had run him out of town right afterwards, or stoned him, they thought, to death, or they put him in jail. They did all kinds of stuff. He had a bad rap sheet <laughs> doing good things. The world d does not. Remember, the world is under the influence of, of the enemy, because that's, that's what he does. And they're rescued when they meet Jesus and they take His hand with their faith and grip God's grace. Jesus at the right hand is the right hand of God reaching down for us, right? Fully man, fully God, but He did it for us. And so the introduction made by Paul, people that, that believe like that got together. They called them, uh, uh, when they got together, churches. And He planted them all these, these places as He went. And the foundation He laid was... This is Jesus. This is who He is. Right? He'll save you. Do you want Him? Those that said yes, what? Became Christians. Part of the family of God. Had eternal life. Those that said no, hopefully others gave them more opportunities later, but no guarantee. I don't like salesmen say, you got to make this deal right now because it's only going to last another 15 minutes. I can't stand here all day. No, it's a sham wow. Y'all remember the sham wows? I can't make this deal all day. So I got one of them gold cloths that sat in the corner and I felt foolish, right? It, but in this case, it really is a limited time. How long is this deal open? Till the church age stops or till we quit breathing. That, that's how long this deal is. And the foundation he laid was heaven is open to you right now through Jesus Christ. That's the foundation. It's after that that things start getting weird. Because how many people get saved and go off in different directions or, or try their boundaries or, or all these other kind of things that happen? Anybody got saved and never sinned again? The first joke I told somebody got. Because it's impossible, isn't it? You're still in a what? A corruptible body. It doesn't mean sin's okay. My sin is not okay. Right? I don't agree with my sin. I don't agree with others. But mine is the one that, that, that stops me from being a better tool for God to use. And, and that's the first one I need to deal with. Amen? Okay? So, he says, when we go build on it, we say, well, I think God means this. I think for some people it's okay to do this, and for others, it, you know, it, it's not okay and all that. In other words, God's standard, uh, they're, they're suggestions. Are they? It's standards. Now, am I under the Hebrew law? Am I under the Hebrew law? No. I'm under the law of Christ, right? Love the Lord your God with all your strength and might. Love your neighbor as yourself. That, that kind of sums up a lot of it. He says all the law and the prophets are come down into that. But, but am I required to go kill a lamb every now and then so that God will forgive me of my sins? No. The sacrifice was made once and for all. Am I required to keep the, the, the feast of Pentecost? No. 
That's not what it was about. It was picturing Christ, but it wasn't Christ. I'm under the new covenant. We talk about it when we do the, the, uh, the Lord's Supper in, in Christ's blood. I'm under the law of grace. But does, does He still give us standards? Yeah, we spoke about a bunch of day. Are we supposed to repay evil for evil? No, it's sin, isn't it? And he tells us it's sin. Are we supposed to uh, not just not commit adultery? Are we supposed to look at someone thinking of adultery? No, He says don't do that. Uh, I need a Savior every day for messing up as much as I do. Okay? So, when we build on it, we need to be sure that we build with the blueprint. Amen? When we build on the foundation of being saved, this is after saved and it's once and done, right? Sealed in the Spirit. Okay? So, when we build on it, we need to be sure we don't build junk. And he's going to talk about that. Let each take heed of how he builds it. That's what I just said. Be careful what you do with it. Don't go misrepresent God's Word. Have I messed up before? I, I, I'm sure I have. And I pray that God straightens it out, puts filters on everybody's ears, and puts a big one on my mouth. Right? But I try to stick with God's Word. That's why we have it on the wall, so you can see what it says. Amen? Uh, he let each one take heed of how he builds on it. I'll say this. I don't intentionally. I don't intentionally mislead anybody by God's Word. There, there's, that's, that's, I'm very concerned about such things. He says, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ, Jesus Christ. Okay? I can't give you another way to be saved. I can't do any of that. I can't tell you, oh, you've got to be a Baptist to be saved. I can't do that. That's another foundation. I can't say if you do this work or that work, that'll save you. I can't do that. That's another foundation. There's only one. What is it? Jesus Christ. There's only one name, right, under heaven by which man can be saved. And that's it. That's it. He says, now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw. Well, there's a distinction between the first three and the second three. What, what, what do you see about the first three? They're expensive. Somebody might be thinking, right? So that's true. But what else? They're, they're durable. I've done a few weddings, and, and we talk about the gold band that, that they use gold because it's not supposed to tarnish, and the circle that doesn't end, you know, and those kind of things. So it, it, it's durable. It's been used for jewelry for a long time because of that, right? They use it in other things like contacts, uh, electrical contacts, because it doesn't tarnish and all. Silver, right? Another, not as expensive gold, but, but not cheap either, is it? But an, another thing, a precious stone. What's the hardest mineral known to man? A diamond. I found use for one now. <laughs> to me, it's a clear rock. But, but anyway, it, but it, they use them in what? Drilling oil wells. Right? They, they probably got a man-made material now. That this, but used to, they used diamond bit drills for, for things because it was, it was strong that way. Right? So these are durable, useful, all of those things. And then we get to wood, hay, and straw. How many of y'all, when y'all read that, you're thinking about the three little pigs? How durable was the straw house or the wood house, the stick house, right? They're not durable and, 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 and relatively speaking, compared to gold and silver and, and precious stones, wood and hay and straw is a lot cheaper, isn't it? And so those are the, the kind of things that our works can be. They can be durable works that add to permanence or they can be what? Cheap get-by ways. Right? We can substitute them for the others. But are they really substitutable? And, and what we're talking about, remember, is, is laying on the foundation of being saved. So we're talking about acting as the church. Being a, a live and vibrant church. And if we're faking it, if we're taking the easy way out and all that kind of stuff, God knows. And He knows if it's genuine. As genuine as our heart can be, as genuine as it can be, He knows when, when, when our desire is lined up with His. Okay? Uh, he says, Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Okay? So let's, let's take gold. We put fire to it. What, what happens to it? It melts. Then, then what happens when you take the heat off of it? It's back. 
Pretty durable stuff. In fact, if it had impurities into it, what, what do they do? They either burn away or they float to the top. And dross, they call it, right? Well, the same with silver, isn't it? Does fire get rid of gold or silver? No, it actually purifies it. And, and, and can a diamond stand up to heat and all that? Well, I think that's how it was formed, wasn't it? A precious stone and, and those things are, are using So they can endure it. What happens when wood gets up against heat, that, say the kind that would melt gold? It burns quickly at that heat, wouldn't it? What about hay? Even quicker with a lot of smoke. <laughs> right? And straw. Rice stubble and, and etc. All gone really, really quick. So what did it mean? It becomes a vapor. Right? It literally goes up in smoke, does it? Uh, what are examples of something of gold? Let's see. Let me flip over to... I never get enough verses in there. And you're probably kind of glad of that. <laughs> but in Ephesians, chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, By grace you've been saved through faith, and not of, of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God had works, good works for you and I do. When I say good, I mean godly. There's none good but God according to Scripture, right? And He prepared them for us beforehand. So what would our good works be? What He prepared. So it would be walking in obedience as the Holy Spirit would lead us to do the works that He prepared. That would come under the, 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 the uh, definition of the gold and the silver and the precious jewels. What would everything else be? Well, we had a, 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 we, we served the Lord today. We picked up every can for a mile on the highway. And, and so He is so proud of us. Uh, did Jesus free all the slaves when He was on earth? No. Did, did, he, did He get uh, everybody treating each other nice and, and no racism, no this? Is that what He spent His time doing while He was on earth? Why didn't He? Aren't those good things? Yeah, they're good things. Are they eternal things? They're not. They're not. Now, in the process of making someone a good steward, a godly steward, the chances are they are going to clean things up. If, if they're a godly steward of the love that God's placed in their heart and loving their neighbor as themselves, then they're going to want to get these social justice things going. That correct by God's definition, not man's, right? They're going to want to do, uh, have justice. They're going to want to have all these other kind of things. But if you do that to win a merit badge from God, you're doing it for who? Yourself. And who conjured the idea of Yourself. And so he says it might have looked religious. In fact, if a billionaire came and put half a billion in the offering plate today, right? But a widow, pure of heart, brought the only two cents she had left in her house. Which one would God value? How much did she invest? Everything. Sold out before the Lord, wasn't she? Right? It wasn't to the highest bidder when it comes to the amount. It was from the highest bidder according to the heart. Right? That clean heart that, that was out there. And that's going to show up in, in those things. It says it's going to be revealed by fire. What does that mean? When, the, when God's judgment hits our deeds, good, bad, whatever, it's going to be revealed. Everybody's going to know. Is it genuine fire? I don't know. It says asked by fire. But it will be revealed. It, it will be apparent right then. Uh, did you know that if, uh, if Jesus, when Jesus comes and people see Him, one of two things has to happen. One, you're already His and you're with Him. Or, judgment time has come. And where is someone who had made Jesus Lord of their life when he, when he shows up and they can see? They can say, yep, that is, He is the Lord. Who knew it? But it's too late because now it's apparent. There's no faith involved. You're saved by grace through what? Faith. There's no faith. It's apparent. Right? It, it doesn't matter. And judgment has to take place and it's too late for, for that moment. Well, here it's apparent what our works were. The billionaire said, look, here's $500 million. Good guy, ain't I? As they used to say in the rodeo days, the fellow that bucked off at seven and a half seconds, give him a big hand because that's all he's going to get. Right? And, and that's what that person would get. Give him a big, big hand, but that's all he gets. There's no reward in heaven for that. One of his heart, it was, look at me, look how good I am, as opposed to, I trust God, as the widow's might was, right? 
said it will be revealed as fire, and the fire will test each one's work and what sort it is. Some will be for reward, some mean absolutely nothing or less. They made us a worse witness. Instead of saying, look how good I am when everybody knows you're not perfect, and I'm not perfect, right? Listen to this, though. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. So if it's of God, those works that he prepared for him, right? He'll receive a reward. Well, do you want that kind of reward? He's not saying, uh, that's what you're working for. You're working for him, and in that honesty, you get the reward. He wants everybody to get those kind of rewards. He said, whatever you're doing now, know you're working for me and not for whoever you think you're working for. Didn't he say that in the Bible? Work for someone else as unto the Lord. Right? Because when you do that, you're building credibility, and who knows if God may use that to lead somebody to him. You get enough credibility and say, well, I do this because... I serve one who loves me and I can trust and it's going to take me to eternal life. And they know that you have credibility by how you work, how you talk, how much self-control you, you, you seek to exercise. They know you're not perfect, you're still on earth. But you build credibility and they may listen to you when you tell them the truth about how to get to heaven. When you tell them of the truth whose name is Jesus. Remember, he's the way, the truth, that truth. Okay? But if anyone's work is burned... He will suffer loss. What will he lose? Can you imagine going to heaven? I got all my good works. I, I can show God this. I got all my evidence. I got all those other kind of things. What's our only plea when we get there? What's our only plea when we get there? If, if Satan says, if he's the accuser, he says, Oh, I know how many times this guy has sinned. And he'd be correct. The one time he wouldn't be lying. Right? What's our plea before the, the, the God, the judge? In the name of Jesus. Jesus died in my place. I trust Him as Lord. Not perfectly yet. I want to. That's my goal, right? But I want to. I keep placing my faith in Him. He says, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved. You mean, your works don't unsave you after you've... How many of us are glad that, that our mess-ups don't unsave us? So he's going to go through the fire and apparently not going to find anything there that, that he did that was honorable to God. It's going to all be uh, uh, wood and, and straw and, 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 and uh, hay. And, and yet he, he go through and he got it. He thought he was doing really good. He put the 500 million in or whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. And he says, he, he's still going to be saved if he ever genuinely trusted God, with, right? But as by fire. Well, what happens if you go through the fire and you had all that wood and straw and stuff and you come out the other side? What do you have when you come out the other side of that fire? It may have been heavy going in. Look at all I got, God, what I did. And I can give you my list. Who's he patting on the back? Himself. And he goes through that trial by fire. What happened to all that that wasn't the precious jewels, the silver or the gold? It's gone. It became vapor. In fact, he's literally naked because the clothes would burn away too, wouldn't it? All of those things would happen, right? And, and it's apparent. He didn't have anything. And yet it says he'll still be saved. Why can he still be saved with his works messed up? Because he wasn't saved by works. What was he saved by? Grace. That means what? The door is still open for, for us imperfect people. Right? The door's still open. Somebody's alarmed out there. Huh? It might be me. You can't ever tell. Mark's got it. Okay. Uh, anyway, let me ask you, how many of y'all figured that when you go through that trial, everything's going to be wonderful? How many of us are a little scared to go through that fire? I, I think of my, my prayers. Most of them are, have some selfishness in them. When I pray for people I love, I'm, I know how it affects me when they're hurting. <laughs> right? And there's a little bit of selfishness in that. Does he say, well, don't pray then? He doesn't say that because I'm praying what? I really want the best for them. But I can't think of one prayer that I pray that didn't got some selfishness in it. Even if I don't pray for the new Corvette or the, the new uh, uh, high-rise apartment or whatever people like. Right? The new bass boat huh? or bay boat. You know, whatever it is, it, it, that may seem, to, but I can't think of one that's not. So none of my prayers are perfect, but I tell you what, the Holy Spirit makes them perfect by the time they get to the throne. 
Right? We know not how to pray as we ought, but in utterance as we can make, the Holy Spirit brings it before the throne. And I trust that. Amen? It was interesting. How many of y'all seen that, that uh, attractive blonde lady that's often in the press box of the uh, Kansas City Chiefs? Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Huh? Listen. Y'all seen that before? Oh no, not, not Taylor Swift. I'm talking about uh, Gracie, uh, last name. Hunt. Hunt, Gracie Hunt, the owner's daughter. Not, yeah, this very attractive lady, right? Well, she was playing pickleball the other day, and y'all need to know this, huh? And, and she was pl playing with uh, uh, Mrs. Tebow. Demi is her name. I'm, we're not on first name basis, but she used to be Miss Universe, if, if you don't know. And it's interesting because they interviewed them, and, and it was about this, this uh, kicker who had made statements that it was holding to the faith, and now he's a horrible person if you read the, the, the stuff. And, I, and, and they were, she was defending him, Miss Hunt was. Right? And, and she said, uh, stuff, she said, I was blessed to have a mom who could stay at home. We, we were, had that, and, and I know other people don't, but I, I got to have that. And the mom also defended him, Christian lady. And, and she said, and, and what I've learned at the end of the interview was, in whatever station God puts you, you need to use that, and I'm paraphrasing, but to, 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 to build credit with them, and, and point them to Jesus Christ for salvation. And she used the words Jesus Christ. So many won't. So that's the attractive person I was talking about who had blonde hair that was up there. And then they went to, to Miss uh, Tebow and they said, well, we heard you wrote a new book. And she says, yeah, there's something about crowns where we started off talking today. And she said, you know, for a while I had the crown of Miss Universe and then one day I had to give it up. And, and said, it, it kind of took my identity. I wasn't Miss Universe anymore. But what do I want to be identified with? Which crown do I want? A temporary crown that goes away or one that's eternal? These two ladies have all kind of popularity, access to money, access to many, many things. And yet they got their priorities right, didn't they? Unexpected in popular culture for, for, for people to do that. And I just couldn't help but make that remarkable because even with everything going their way, we, we think, of course nobody's life truly is in, in that way, but they still put God first and His ways first, even with everything else offered to them. Where are we? Are, are we looking for eternal crowns or temporary crowns? Are, are we looking to use our, our, our whatever we are popularity to, to make us famous or to point to Jesus? If their heart's sincere, on that day, they'll receive those wonderful rewards. Right? And I pray that we get that. I pray that we don't look to the here and now, but we look for the hereafter, forever. Amen? The white throne judgment is not so. When you accept Jesus as your Lord, your name goes in the Lamb's Book of Life. If it's sincere, not just words, but sincere, right? You've got to believe in your heart. Remember how it puts it in there? If you didn't, your name's not in the Lamb Book of Life. The judgment is already settled before you get there. It's already a done deal. So here, we've talked to the church about what we need to be doing with our time left on earth. And we've talked to the lost about what happens if you don't make Jesus your Lord. If you don't accept that, that amazing right hand of God reaching down to save you. Right? And His name, of course, is Jesus Christ. So if you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord, the one you're following. By the way, if you follow Him, you wind up where He is. That's how that works. And where is He? Right hand of the Father, the Bible says, right? In heaven. Okay? And that's where you'll always be with Him after that. Okay? If you don't do that, then you'll be at the white throne judgment. If you do that, we'll go through that other one, but not about losing your salvation, but about the awards that come. You don't want to be like Daryl getting the attendance award. For making half that year, you know that kind of thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm embellishing. I understand that, but there are others who, who had high achievements. I pray that the achievements are high because we trusted Jesus for their lives. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father.